Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank the, all organizers for this lovely event. And uh, today's mentees who are the future mentors and all this community, I hope, uh, grows bigger and be better than all of us in the future. And today, I would like to introduce you and also thank to my mentee, Matt, and he's the French bachelor, and he will soon start his master study in Big Camp University and the state of Georgia. Uh, I should probably also start out by uh, thanking everyone. Uh, this uh, event, uh, I'm just going to start. Um, today, uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, edge and cover ideals, which are certain uh, algebraic constructions done, uh, created using uh, the vertices of a graph. Uh, yeah. and. I should probably just uh, start with the definitions. Uh, we should probably start by setting some uh, notation. Um, we will use uh, we will use S to denote a polynomial ring over a field K, and uh, we will call every uh, element of this form uh, monomials, which are uh, multiples of uh, pure powers of uh, the variables, and we will call a monomial square free if it doesn't have any uh, square term in the well, not really this uh, any square term in the uh, powers. We, we will call them square free if the powers are only zero or one. And we will call any ideal that is generated purely by monomials a monomial ideal. Uh, for example, here, uh, this uh, ideal is a monomial ideal, but it is not a square free monomial ideal. Uh, these elements are square free, whereas this is not. And an important uh, uh, property of monomial ideals is, uh, if you take a set of monomials in I, which are minimal with respect to divisibility, then these will uh, create a, a, a generating set for I, which is unique. Uh, we will denote by GI. Uh, next, uh, we know that for a, we know that a, we can decompose a polynomial ideal uh, into uh, intersection of uh, prime uh, monomial ideals. And in our case, uh, prime um, monomial ideals will be ideals that are only generated by variables. And uh, I mean, associated prime is actually a rather large uh, definition. But in our case, associated primes will be the uh, prime ideals that are in the uh, decomposition of the uh, our monomial ideal. Uh, um, for square free monomial ideals, we'll actually have uh, for every monomial square free, every square free monomial ideal, we can actually find superficial complexes, but we don't really have time to talk about superficial complexes. So we are going to only uh, talk about its uh, effects on finite simple graphs. Uh, next, and here, um, these, for, um, I mean, graphs can be thought of as uh, nodes and relations between nodes. And uh, here uh, we have the graphs, the kind of graphs that will be imported in this talk, which is, uh, this is the cycle graph, which starts from a node and then cycles back to that node. Uh, and complete graph is, uh, is a graph where every vertex is incident to every other vertex. And the quartal graph will be a kind of graph where the um, longest minimal cycle, uh, cycle will be of length three at most. Um, and uh, here is an uh, important uh, uh, concept uh, for us, uh, which is a vertex cover. Uh, a vertex cover will be, will be a subset of the vertices of a graph uh, that covers every single edge in a way. Uh, here, uh, if we take one, two, and four, we can see that the uh, vertex one will cover this and this edge, and two will cover this edge and this edge as well, and four will cover, cover these two edges, so there is no edge left uncovered. Uh, we will call them a minimal vertex cover if they are minimal with respect to set inclusion, and this one here is minimal. We can remove any, any vertices, vertices from this. Um, Cover. And here is our important uh, algebraic construction. Uh, it's, I think it's better if I read out the definition. Um, 
for a graph with vertices x1 through xn, uh, we define the edge ideal as the multiples of xi, xj, if xi, xj are incident in the graph. And we will define a cover ideal as the, um, uh, the intersection of uh, ideals that are generated by the variables of the edges. And uh, if you want to characterize cover ideals uh, as the pure generators, uh, we will first set this notation that uh, for all um, variables in the set W, we multiply, we multiply them all, and we can actually characterize every cover ideal as uh, an ideal generated by the multiples of uh, minimal vertex covers of G. And here, that would be uh, one, two, and four. Uh, but we have to take every single minimal vertex cover. Uh, and here we have uh, examples for uh, cover and edge ideals. There's something that I want to uh, draw your attention to. Uh, we can see a certain kind of uh, relation between edge and cover ideals, which is uh, the generators of uh, cover ideals or like edge ideals here. Like for example, this one x one x two x four will appear as a uh, every uh, this will appear in the associated primes of the uh, edge ideal of the same. Uh, uh, graph. Uh, this will happen the other way as well, and I think we call this the this property is called, if I recall correctly, the Alexander duality. Uh, and next, uh, we have the problem of vertex coloring. Uh, for a graph, uh, we uh, to every vertex we assign a color, and the rule here is that if two vertices are uh, incident, they will not have the same color. And here uh, we can see that. Uh, uh, this gives a valid vertex coloring, and uh, this is the lowest amount of colors that we need to uh, be able to color this graph. So that we will call that number the chromatic number of G, and here in this case it is three. And in fact, for every cycle graph, uh, if we have odd number of vertices, then we will have uh, the, the chromatic number of that graph will be three and two if it is even. Uh, and here we have our first important theorem. Uh, when we take a graph with vertices x1 through xn, and if uh, this is the cover ideal of it, we, if we take this, uh, uh, this uh, monomial and consider it, uh, we will start by checking every single power of this monomial ideal, and if it is in the, uh, you know, this uh, power of the ideal, uh, then we will, the, for the minimum number that this holds, uh, that will be the chromatic number of the uh, graph. I think it will be better uh, demonstrated in an example. So we already know that the um, chromatic number for a cycle graph of five vertices is three, and we will uh, now check that. Uh, we use uh, the computer algebra system Mokole 2 to compute this, uh, we first calculate the second power of the cover ideal, and these are its generators. And none of the generators here will divide uh, x1 through x5 multiplied. So we check uh, the third power of the uh, cover ideal. Um, it has way too many uh, generators, so we could not really write it out here, but it will have this uh, generator, generator which is going to divide uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, uh, to the power of 2. So we will know that, and this is the lowest number that we can get, so we know that the uh, chromatic number of C5 is in fact 3. Uh, next, uh, we are going to talk about powers of cover ideals and how uh, we can calculate the associated times of set power of cover, cover ideals. And uh, we are going to have to talk about the induced uh, subgraph, uh, uh, the definition of induced subgraph, which is when we take a subset of the vertices, then we can define the induced subgraph as um, the vertices. Uh, we'll do that by taking the vertices and uh, protecting the, keeping the uh, edges between them, and we're going to throw out anything that is connected to the vertices that we don't take. So here, 
vertices would be, uh, you know, the, the pick the colored vertices. We can keep, we will keep the edges between them and we're going to throw out the edges that are uh, incident with uh, the white vertices here. Okay, so we are also going to define uh, what a critically S chromatic graph is, and that would be uh, a graph that is S chromatic. And if we were to take out any edge from that graph, if the uh, chromatic number decreases, then that graph will be critically S chromatic. And here, as an example, we can use KN. Uh, it has a chromatic number N. Obviously, here it is uh, K4. And for if we take any edge from the complete graph on n vertices, it will be isomorphic to complete graph on n minus one vertices. So it is critically n chromatic, and here it is critically three chromatic. Um, uh, and here, uh, this uh, theorem works in the other way from the previous theorem, actually. So. Um, here in our hand, we have a graph that is uh, critically S plus one chromatic. I mean, that is a subgraph that is critically uh, S plus one chromatic. And then uh, we know that the associated prime that is associated by, associated with the, uh, you know, the ideal that is generated by these vertices will appear in the S power of the power ideal, but it will not appear for any power that is lower than uh, S. Uh, and again, here's an example for it. And there's an important characterization here for the second power of the uh, for of the cover ideal. And here uh, we can see that the induced subgraph on one five six will be a um, cycle graph on three vertices. So it will be critically three chromatic. So we can say that this uh, uh, prime ideal will appear in the associated times of the second power of the cover ideal. And the, for the second power of the cover ideal, we can characterize this as the, every single prime ideal in this cover ideal as either the edges uh, or the um, induced sub uh, or any uh, odd vertex, uh, odd uh, cycle that appears in the graph, which in this case will be one, five, six, uh, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five. Uh, with that, we're going to go on our uh, last uh, section, which will be on linear resolutions and Krobax theorem. Uh, so uh, we define a minimal graded minimal field resolution as these sequences of homomorphisms, which are going to be exact, where every fi here will be isomorphic to the direct sum of uh, these uh, shifted rings. Uh, and this beta ij will be called the Betty number uh, for uh, this ring. Uh, and we will say that an ideal has a delinear resolution if uh, the shift moves linearly. Okay, uh, p, p minus one, uh, up, 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 uh, minus d, minus p, minus d, minus d, plus one, and so on. And, and with D. Um, we also need to uh, define the complement of a graph, which is basically taking a graph, uh, remo removing all the vertices, uh, all the edges between vertices, and adding back the edges, uh, adding back the edges that were not in the original graph. And in fact, these two are isomorphic to each other. So it's right. Uh, and next, um, so we consider a graph like this, and if we take the complement of that graph, we said it is a quartal graph. Uh, and the edge ideal of this graph is the following. And when we again compute the minimal graded free resolution of this uh, ideal, we actually see that it's linear. Uh, it's actually a two linear resolution. So actually a two linear resolution. So uh, we might wonder if there is a way to characterize uh, graphs with uh, linear resolutions. And that is actually what Probax theorem gives us, which is if we have a graph that has, uh, that's, uh, whose complement is a quartal graph, then we will have, uh, then its edge ideal will have a linear resolution. So I want to thank everyone for it.